I said there's nothing definite yet. Well, you said you discussed it with Sherry Keegan. I said we had a meeting. Why are you cross-examining me? Why are you being so defensive? I mean, you've been like that a lot lately. You've been accusing me a lot lately. Oh, a husband can't ask his wife a few simple questions. Like, uh... Like why there were so many phone calls to Stockholm over the past few months? Well, they seem pretty tight. And I just wonder what Dylan would think if Alex and I hit it off. That's an awful idea. Besides, what makes you think Dylan won't see right through it? I don't know. I mean, maybe he'll be mad, but then again, maybe not. <laughs> what makes you think he won't be mad? He'll be furious. Well, yeah, at first, but then when he sees Alex and I together, he'll realize he still has feelings for me. Lindy, trust me, you can't do this. So what did you tell him? That I would do my best. Use the S57 serum as you and I plan. What about the money? He just lost the whole lab. How is he going to get the necessary funds to go forward? Where is Martin going to get the money? Mamma brukar alltid göra sådär. Vadå? Lyssna på när jag spelade utan att jag förstår om det. Har du skrivit någon text i den här låten nu? Nej, inte än. Men jag jobbar på saken. Vad handlar det om? Ingen särskilt grej. Vad då för grej? Okej, det handlar om en kille. Någon speciell kille? En vanlig kille. Mm -hmm. Som... Uh, han träffar den här tjejen. Han träffar en tjej? Mm, jag fattar. Okej, låt mig gissa. De... Um, blir kära. Något åt det hållet. Mm. Ja, det var ju det jag trodde. Det var ju fantasifullt. Someone at school.
fick aldrig ta av sken. Ingen har någonsin betytt så mycket för mig. Och nu så är hon bara borta. Jag borde ha kämpat mer för mig. Jag skulle ha gjort någonting som inte gick tillbaka till honom. Jag älskar henne. Jag älskar henne. had something to do with the DevTech explosion. I think he wanted me dead. Come on. Do you have a boyfriend? Um, I appreciate you taking me to school, Jimmy Ray. I usually go with Lindy, but she had some sort of modeling shoot. Ain't no problem. That skirt you're wearing, don't you think it's a little bit tight? No. You're wearing makeup? Yes, what's the big deal? Lindy wears makeup. All the girls do. Listen, you're not like Lindy or the other girls. Cut it out, Jimmy Ray. What? Trashing my friends. I know what you told my father. Roberto, I had a responsibility to tell him. I'm so sick and tired of everybody telling me what to do, who to hang out with. Listen, we're just both very concerned about you. I'm so glad you both think you know what's best for me. Listen, Roberto just wants the best you for me. You know what? I know what's best for me. Not you, not my father, me. I can make my own decisions, and if you don't like it, Well, then you know exactly what you could do with it. You can't honestly believe that Martin wanted you dead. He practically threatened me at Bobby's funeral. He also wanted you to take over the project. He didn't mean that literally. He was just asking if it was possible. Stop making excuses, Will. I'm not. Look, people say things in the heat of the moment that they don't mean. Martin was angry, frustrated. True, but I think it goes deeper. I think it was personal. What do you mean? Well, he thought I was having an affair with Anne. You, Chrissy. Dylan ska komma och hämta mig om en liten stund. Och ja... Och vadå? Jag ber verkligen om ursäkt, Chrissy. För vad? Det har varit väldigt jobbigt de senaste dagarna och jag har sagt en massa saker till dig som... Jag är väldigt ledsen att jag sa dem. Han är förmodligen förtjänad det väl det mesta. Du... Jag är också jätteledsen. Jag har... Jag har varit ganska okänslig. Jag vet att det var jättejobbigt för dig att lämna Stockholm. Du hade alla dina vänner där och... Du älskade ditt liv där, jag vet det. Och så missade du chansen att bli den här superkända stjärnan. Det är så kul när jag tänker på de där unga groupiesarna som inte kommer ha en snygg kille som du att kunna dräggla över. Jag vet att du skulle ha vunnit den här tävlingen, Alex. Jag vet det. Och för mig kommer du alltid vara en superstjärna. Ja, ja. Du vet, jag bryr mig inte om det längre. Inte något av det. Jag skulle kunna förlora varenda sång tävling i hela världen om jag bara fick tillbaka mamma. Jag skulle slå sönder den här gitarren om jag, om jag bara fick träffa pappa en enda gång till. Justin, do. 
Jag hittar de här soporna. Vill du verkligen slänga den? Jag vill aldrig mer se den här klänningen, Alex. What are you doing? You will not believe how many bucks Martin Devon contributed to Jack's Senate campaign. Yeah, forget that. They were really pushing hard for the Oval Office in the next election. Yeah, great. I need more copy on the latest dead hooker. And something must have happened, and the whole friendship went south, just like the Hamilton kids said. <clears throat> Jack must have refused to play ball. Yeah, what is this? No flair, no flash, no gory details. It's the facts, Harry. Okay, two hookers are dead. The cops won't release any details. What do you want me to do, make them up? Hell yeah! I mean, this is gonna be page one on the Informer, complete with a color insert of the body. I don't write fiction, Harry. Yeah, well, maybe you need to get down off your high horse and give me something that sells papers. You know... And don't give me that squeaky clean Columbia School of Journalism look. You know, I've been turning in some pretty high-level investigative stuff. And, you know, it would be nice to get a little thank you or good work crystal, you know, once every 10 years or so. Fine. You did good. Now, can I get more copy on the dead hooker? Wow, I can tell that really came straight from the hardened arteries. Look, Harry, you green-lighted the Hamilton story. You know, I could use a little support. Ooh, ooh, support. You see, that's the operative word here, Crystal. How am I supposed to support your Pulitzer ambitions if I go bankrupt? A, a moot point, to be sure. But let me lay this out for you. No newspaper, no Hamilton expose. Am I getting through to you? Can I help you with something? Um, yeah, I was just looking for Dylan. Well, you found me. Okay, well, do you have any idea where he might be? I know he's not here. Okay, I'll just be going now. Nice meeting you. It's T. Ah, so you're the famous T. You know me? Of course. I heard you were the best basketball player in South Florida. Really? No, but Dylan told me you'd like to think so. <laughs> you got a name? Yes, a very pretty one, in fact. Which is? Kayla. Oh, you're Kayla. You're the girl that has all the guys running scared. <laughs> really? No, but Dylan told me you'd like to think so. <laughs> All right, fair enough. You know, you're never going to be a state champ if you keep pulling your hook. Are you going to tell me how to play basketball, huh? No, I'm going to show you. Oh! <laughs> nice shot. <laughs> I'm sorry for giving you such a hard time. I worry about you, Elena. I'm a big girl. I can take care of myself. Okay, but I don't want to see you get hurt by people like your friend Lindy. You know what? If you have a problem with Lindy, that's your problem. I like her, and I'm old enough to pick my own friends. And do me a favor. Stop acting like you're some glorified watchdog. I'm just trying to help. Well, you're not. You're just making it twice as hard for me to connect with my father. Elena. You know what, Jimmy Ray? If you're really my friend, You'll help me convince my father to let me make some of my own decisions. Is that what you really want? Yes. Can I count on you? Sure. If it'll make you happy. Whether you believe me or not, that's all I really want. I believe you. And I'm sorry for getting so mad at you. It's OK. Have a good day. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for the ride. but never too young to work for me. Good 
morning. You're up with the birds today, sweetness. Huh? In case. Coffee. Sober? Somebody left the press. Have you seen the morning paper yet? I'll be back in a little bit. Alex? Are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine, Mrs. Kevin. How are you? I'm fine. I'm concerned about Chrissy, though. I saw her just tear out of hair like hell on wheels. Yeah, Chrissy hasn't been doing really well. No. I know. She's trying to pretend like none of this has happened. That's just it. She would just let it out and talk to me, you know, share it, I, I, I guess. But she just can't do that yet, Alex. She's not there. Emotionally, she just can't cope with what's happened yet. So we just need to be very patient with Chrissy. And we need to let her work this out in her own way, in her own time. What if she never does? Chrissy's like that. She can just put up this wall and block stuff out. But we all have our walls. We all do that. I know this is especially hard for you because you need to be able to share your grief and your memories with your sister. It gets really lonely sometimes. I know it does. I know. Give Chrissy a little time, okay? And if she snaps at you, don't take it personally, because her anger's not directed at you. It's just directed at life. You're a really special person, Mrs. Devon. <laughs> Please, I've asked you both to call me Anne. Otherwise, you're gonna make me feel so old. Hey, superstar, your limo has arrived. Jag brukar laga te till henne. Söderblandning med lite mint i. Hon tyckte verkligen om det. Hon brukade säga att det var minten som gav karaktär. Mm. Jag hann aldrig lära känna henne. Hon var fantastisk. Jag tror inte hon förstod det själv. Jag är hemskt ledsen, men det här känns jättekonstigt. Visste min bror om att du hade en relation till Nora? Kanske, jag, jag vet faktiskt inte. Jag vet att hon älskade honom. Jag är säker på det. Jag är också säker på att hon försökte på alla sätt att få honom att öppna sig. Men jag hade kunnat berätta för att han skulle aldrig ha släppt in mig. Han var bara inte sån. Men jag är glad att hon hade dig. Tack. Det betyder mycket. Vet du, jag hatade honom verkligen många år. Jag hatade honom för att han inte älskade mig tillräckligt. Jag hatade honom mer. Alltså jag vet att det låter hemskt, men... Det var inte det att han tog Nora ifrån mig, utan det att han... ...puttade den i armarna på mig. Han, hon, han bara hade givit henne vad hon bad om, hon bönade honom och så hade det aldrig börjat hända. Men det vet du. Jo, det vet jag. Hon åkte till labbet den kvällen. För att försöka få äktenskap att funka. Jag hade faktiskt ingen aning om. Nej, och jag skulle ha sett till att hon stannade hemma. Jag skulle ha berättat för henne hur det egentligen låg till. Vad då låg till? Han ljög för henne. Nej, men nu, nu förstår jag ingenting. Nu får du faktiskt berätta. Stefan ville aldrig att äktenskapet skulle fungera. Jag kan vara säker på det. Därför att han hade en affär med Andevon. Anne called me at least half a dozen times in Stockholm. She said she was afraid Martin thought we were having an affair. We weren't. I wasn't asking. I know, and uh, thank you for your discretion. But I have to be honest with you. Nora and I were having problems. Well, she wasn't happy, I guess, and neither was I. Anyway, on my last business trip to Miami a few months ago, Anne and I spent some time together. We, uh, we went to the opera, caught a few art exhibits, and I realized 
my feelings for her might not be entirely platonic. What I'm trying to say is, I think Martin could have picked up on that, even if Anne didn't. I hear you, Stefan. But even if what you suspect is true, that's not a reason for a guy to sabotage his own company. On the surface, I agree. But don't forget how much pressure Martin was under to get the Melania out on time. That kind of pressure could drive a man over the edge, not to mention... What? Okay. What if Martin is so overextended with the bank? What if he can't make his loan payments? And the only way out is to kill the product so he could... Could collect the insurance money. The Russian is in town tonight, which should solve your financial problems. Be here at 10 sharp. I can't. I've got to sing at the club tonight. Oh, we all have obstacles to overcome, don't we? Call in sick. Honey, you want the gig or not? Don't get me wrong. I think it's great you're setting your sights so high. Are you saying that you won't help me? No, I'm saying that maybe you should take some time to get yourself together. Maybe take a few university courses. Yeah, well, you sound just like my mother. But I'm so glad that everybody else knows what I want, except me. But I'll tell you what, I want to get my career started. So are you going to help me or not?